I'm Takis Walter and I'd like to welcome you back to my studio. In today's video, we are going to add our local color to the underpainting experiments that we performed in the previous installation. As a reminder, I did a dry pastel underpainting, a watercolor underpainting, a Gamsol underpainting, and an alcohol wash underpainting. Let's get started. Starting with the dry pastel analogous underpainting, I'm starting to apply the colors to the sky. Typically, I like to work from the background to the foreground. So starting with the sky and keeping aerial perspective in mind, I'm applying a dark blue at the top of the sky and a lighter value towards the horizon line. Now applying some blue pastels to the distant mountains. Now adding some dark blue to the distant tree line. I like to add the dark values first and then build on that with the light. And I'm working on top of a blue, a very cool blue-green underpainting with the dry pastel. So on top, I'm adding a lot of warm greens. Now adding some of the pinks or mauve colors of the ripe grasses in the middle ground. It's a fun color. And just adding some lighter greens into the foreground. Establishing some foliage on this lone tree that's in the middle ground as well. And working the foreground some more adding different values, different shades of green. I'm using soft pastels and hard pastels and finding the coverage to be pretty easy at this point because of the analogous underpainting. Now moving on to the complementary alcohol wash underpainting. What I'm trying to do here is remembering to use a lot of the same colors that I used in the analogous underpainting. The goal of this exercise is to see how the different colors, um, how they're affected by what's underneath. So, so remembering to use the same colors is very important. Now, the difference that I've seen so far with the dry analogous underpainting and now this complementary color underpainting is that if I want a lot of the underpainting to show I apply the pastel in a very light manner I am not using a lot of pressure and I love the effect of the red showing underneath the green I love the vibrancy and the vibration that I get from the blue and orange on top of each other So just developing this some more, developing that tree. Now bringing in those ripe grass colors and filling in the green in the foreground. Here I'm trying to use some warm greens and then coming in with some cooler highlights. You can see that I'm using the broad side of the pastel frequently here. I'm saving the edge to when I, I need to add details. Coming in with some bright greens with a Trishage pastel by Diane Townsend.
And now moving on to the watercolor underpainting. Now the watercolor underpainting was really pretty pleasing when I shared this on my social media. That one was probably the most popular. Again, filling in the sky and those distant hills and tree line using the same colors that I used in the previous pieces. Working on the watercolor was also interesting. It had a really soothing effect um, as compared to the complementary colors. Complementary had a more dynamic, um, vibrant effect, whereas the analogous and the watercolor underpainting just had a different mood altogether. Putting some finishing touches here on all of them, trying to get some of those flowers in the foregrounds highlighted with some yellow. Finishing up that lone tree, adding multiple values. And some highlights to the distant grasses. Now moving on to the Gamsol underpainting. I had to wipe it down because it was still a little wet even after about an hour and a half had passed by the time I got to this one. Again, trying to apply the same colors that I used in the other pieces. Blues and, and a very light pink in the sky. I found this violet to be very interesting. So using the Gamsol, which is a solvent that I typically use when I do my oil painting, it's a paint thinner that I'll use to tone my canvases, I found that the Gamsol somehow changed the texture of the UART paper. It made the grain a lot less even and more random, and it felt highly textured. And as I applied the pastel, I had to use a lot more pressure to get the colors in than on the three previous examples. You can see I'm dragging some green across and it's taking a lot of pressure to kind of get that pastel to get into those crevices, those newly crevices that was created by the Gamsol pushing around the sanded texture. Also because the Gamsol underpainting was still a little bit wet, the colors are coming in a little bit darker than the previous examples. As you can see, even my application of how I'm applying the pastel has changed a bit with this Gamsol underpainting. I find that I'm using more of the point of the pastel to make hatching marks rather than using the broad side of the pastels to make more painterly marks and broad strokes. So there are all the underpaintings that we experimented with this session. I hope you have a favorite, I know I do. Thank you for joining me. See you next time. Bye.